Hello guys, in today's video we're gonna see how to set up routing in the newest version of Angular, so stay tuned. Here in front of me and actually on the screen, uh, we have a basic uh, application generated by using Angular CLI and typing ng-new and the name of the application, in my case it is routing standalone components, but it can be anything you type there. So uh, nothing has changed here. So this is everything generated by Angular CLI. So you can follow it by generating the same component for yourself. But before we start talking about the new approach here, uh, let's see what happened in the past and what is different here. So I'm opening another application that I generated a long time ago. Uh, that has the routing set up here, set it up. So uh, what's the difference here? Uh, in the past, we had app module here with everything inside it, like imports, browser module, app routing module, etc. And also we had app routing module uh, where we stored all of our routes and configurations there. So that's something that we had in the past. But uh, from now, in the newest version, uh, by default, we don't have any modules here, as you can see. So what's going on here? Angular team has changed the uh, strategy and uh, they encourage us to use standalone components that are uh, now default by default uh, true, actually. So we cannot see any modules here. In my opinion, standalone components are better, faster and more flexible than the, the previous ones we had. Because uh, uh, in the past we had to import our components into app module and do everything uh, with them. But right now, when we generate a component, we can move that component across our application and be sure that that component is going to work as expected we, uh, without uh, changing anything in the app module or any module where we uh, imported our component. But what is important? we can still use modules in Angular if we actually need them. So uh, they are not out, we can still use them, but uh, it is better and the newer uh, approach to use uh, these standalone components here. So right now I'm going to open a terminal here, so you can uh, drag this here up, or you can press Control and backtick on your keyboard, which is a button below the Escape button. So. Right now, I'm going to generate uh, two components here and to set up routing uh, into them like this. So I'm typing ng new as a new uh, uh, ng sorry g as a generate, and I'm now uh, typing the name. For example, first. So this is going to be the first component. As you know, uh, Angular's CLI is actually uh, sorry ngg. C as a component and uh, we have to just uh, type it first, for example. So, uh, as you know, Angular is adding a component next to the name of every component here. So if we generated uh, app first, it is actually app first component. If you type it generate first component, then you will get first component component. So that's the uh, reason why I typed ng, uh, G GC and the first. And right now, I'm also going to generate a second component and, you guess it, call it second. Okay, hit enter, wait for it to be generated. And now we can see first and second components here. So we can also go to our first component and you can see that is also a standalone components and also our second component is standalone. So uh, that's something you. Okay, right now we can open our application to see what we actually have. So running ng s as a sir, we can open uh, we can open our we can actually build our application and open it. But if we add the flag o, it is going to automatically build and open our application after building it. So it is opened in my browser. Let me bring it here to you. I'll zoom a bit. Okay, we have our application on the port 4200, as you can see here. So we are going to remove everything from here and to make some changes and set up actually 
our routing there. Okay. Now, I'll remove here this. Okay. Now I'll remove everything from here, from the app component, and I will just add h2 and call it testing routing. Okay, testing routing. And below, we have to add app router. Router outlet, actually, I said app router. So we have to add a router outlet here. So what is router outlet? Router outlet is holding our routes uh, and showing the content of our routes inside of this here. So we have a testing routes here. And also uh, we have a, a here, we can add some navigation here. So uh, I'm gonna add uh, something like uh, nav, okay, as a navigation, and I will add a list and I'll add two list items and actually anchor link that is actually a router link that is going to be in our case let's say first component okay is going to be a first component and we can say router link active this is just to be active and also uh, we can just uh, add a name here and call it first component And actually, instead of writing this here, I'm just going to duplicate this here and I'll call it second. Second component and also change the name here. Second component. So we have first and second component. If we save this and go back to our browser, we're going to see that uh, we have our testing routing here. I'll zoom it a bit here. We have a testing routing here, and we have a first component and the second component. So we have to set up routing because if we just try to open first component here, we got nothing here because we don't have a routing for this. So going back to the Visual Studio Code and uh, the newest approach here, we are actually going to add some configuration to the app routes here. So uh, like in the app routing module, now here we have our routes array, the same one that we had previously there. So uh, we can just do the following. We can add uh, object an object here, and we can say that we have a path that is actually first component and it is actually calling our first component here that is component first component now we have set up a uh, first component routing for the first component and after this I'll just duplicate this and add second component here second component so just let me call it second component and now we can save it here. And after this, we are going, navigating back, actually going back to our browser, and we can see that we have first component and the second component. So they are not clickable right now, but I'll show you what was the trick here. So uh, what we have to do right now here, uh, we have to go uh, to our uh, app component here, and here, we have to do, we have to add some imports as well. So in the past, you were importing these things in the uh, app, uh, app module, but right now we are doing it in the component itself. So the next thing is going to be a router link. And this router link will allow us to open our component to actually have a clickable components here, as you can see. So first works and the second works. So you can see that after adding this, uh, this uh, router link here, 
we are able to use that router link here and to open to have these links actually clickable and another thing that i'm going to add is here uh router link active actually router link active so this is actually just going to see uh, if our link is active and to add something to it so for example if we want to to change styling of active link and so on and so on. so uh, this is it right now and a bonus tip I'm going to show you also how to lazy load these uh, components so uh, right now I'm inspecting uh, this and I'm going to open this inspector here just let me bring it here and I'll just add it to the to the dock and just move it a bit up then we will be able to track our application so going back to our visual studio code here and here in the app routes I'm instead of uh, second component here I'm not gonna call, call it like this so what am I doing here uh, right now uh, I'm using a different approach and actually using a load component key load component as you can see here and now after this I'm just using an arrow function that is uh, going to import something that is actually our component so first and then first component so this is the first component and uh, we're just going to say then and you can call it let's say C as a component and actually just I have to add this C and uh, to say C and first component here usually we're using it like a M before because it was module but right now I'm using like a C here for the component then after doing that uh, we're actually having uh, lazy loaded our component to be able to test that we just have to go back to our browser and right now I'll just clear everything and let's see the network tab here okay I'll zoom it a bit okay and now when I click in the first component we see that nothing has changed because we have already downloaded the bundle here and the content as you can see but when I click on the second component take a look right now we can see the chunk here actually from routes that is actually our uh, component so we can see from the first component we have uh, we have this chunk and uh, we have the data here regarding the loading so okay so actually our component is going to be lazy loaded so first one again other load we have everything here first component does nothing but the second component loads a chunk here so which means our routing works as expected so this is it when it comes to the routing in this video but in the next one we can see another different approaches and uh, some advanced things Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you like the video and see you in the next one. Bye.